Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how to set up RetroBat through portable device. Now, if you just want to set up RetroBat just as a normal front end on Windows PC, then you can also follow this guide. It's going to be similar, if not very similar. This is going to be a very comprehensive setup guide, and I'm going to include instructions in this for a lot of things I've never actually added into a comprehensive setup guide before. So I'm going to be going through a hell of a lot in this video, such as how to add free games, uh, we're going to be looking at downloading themes, how to map controllers uh, for player two also, because a lot of people has asked me about how to map how player two controllers. So we're checking that out as well. I'm also going to be showing you how to download and scrape art. I'm going to be showing you how to open up Retro Arch and actually download and use cheats within our Retro Bat games. How to add custom music and how to add and delete intro videos. So like I say, there's a lot in this guide and it doesn't matter if you're a portable user or just a normal Windows user for So check this one out. <laughs> Okay, before I start today's RetroBat version 6 portable setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. That just means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide, which is pretty much every day. So first things first, I'm not a RetroBat channel. I've got around 130 different RetroBat setup guides within my playlists. But I also cover a broad range of other emulation setups. So with that out of the way, what we're going to do first of all then is establish what sort of device you're going to be using. So for this setup guide today, I'm going to be using a Samsung device and that's a USB free device for this. Now, if you're using a USB device, personally, I would say to use a USB free rather than USB 2. Of course, transfer rates is a lot quicker with USB 3. So what we're going to do first of all is actually download RetroBat. So if you're new to RetroBat and you're not sure what it is, it's a front end system which runs through Windows. So we can use Windows as well as use RetroBat simultaneously. Now, if you don't like the idea of this and you prefer a system, a front end system, which boots directly into the front end, then something like Batacera might be your best way. However, there is ways to actually boot up your Windows PC and go directly into RetroBat. So it's emulation station powered or so it says. Emulation station is the backbones of RetroBat. And we also got RetroArch, which is also going to be a part of the download. Inside of RetroBat, you're going to find that we do need to download particular emulators, but largely RetroArch supports most things within RetroBat. So let's just go download RetroBat. And like I say, the current version of this is version 6. And this version released a few weeks ago. So we're going to download this now. This is going to take us to RetroBat's official itch.io. If we go to downloads now, what we're going to do is go, no thanks, just take me to downloads. And from here, what we're going to do is download the top one just here, which says 24 days ago. Uh, so this is for Windows 64. So if we download this just over one gigabyte file. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is just connect my USB device. So I've just connected my USB device and as we can see, I've got a couple of things on here already. I'm a Launchbox user and that's my preferred choice of front end systems. Okay, so RetroBat version 6 is now successfully downloaded and we're going to see a setup.executable. If we just double left click on this one. Okay, so the first thing we're going to see is select setup language. Now, depending on which language you speak, obviously choose a language of your choice. I'm going to use English. I'm going to go to OK. And welcome to the RetroBat setup wizard. If we just press next on this part, I accept the agreement and go to next and next again. Now, this is the part where we need to install this onto USB drive. By default, this is going to install onto your computer itself, onto your C drive, as we can see. So what we need to do then is actually change this in order to go directly onto USB. So we're going to go to browse. And as we can see, I've got two drives. I've got my C drive, which is my Windows 11 operating system. And I've also got my new volume, which is my USB drive. So if I just left click on that, so it's highlighted, go to OK. And if I press on Next, 
Now, because we're making this portable, we don't actually need to make a shortcut for this. After all, you're going to be using this portably, so you can actually use this at friends' houses or family houses, wherever you want to take it. So there's really no need of creating a desktop shortcut. So we're going to go to next and install. Next thing you should see is, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? And this is Microsoft Direct X. You need to press yes on this. And we're just going to allow this a little bit of time to start installing. And as we can see through the process here, and looking at my USB drive, we now have RetroBat being installed. And if we open up this folder, you'll then see all the contents being generated from this installation. So we're going to just wait around two or three minutes for this to extract and to install into USB. And what I'm going to do whilst this is extracting and actually going onto my USB device, I'm going to actually go back over to one of my favorite websites actually for homebrew games. This is itch.io. This is where we just downloaded Retrobat from. So I'll leave the link in my description. I highly recommend this for free homebrew modern day games for retro computers or retro consoles. Now what I'm going to do is just type into the search bar C64. C64 is my favorite system of all time. And if you're actually interested in Commodore, I've actually got another channel known as Commodore Rediscovered, and that's absolutely dedicated 100% to Commodore systems. So what we're going to do for now is actually just download a C64 game, because I'm going to be showing you how to install your own games into Retrobat, if you're brand new to this, that is. So if we just go through this selection of games just here, I'm going to pick out one of my favourite modern games which is absolutely free this is Leicester and I'm going to go to downloads now and just like Retrobat no thanks just take me to downloads if you want to support the developer totally donate a minimum of two dollars and show your appreciation I'm going to go to no thanks just take me to the downloads for now and I'm going to download the game itself and here's the game downloads and inside of here, we got a .prg. So if you're unfamiliar with Commodore 64, some games are in .prg, some's in .d64, and some's in .tap. So what I'm gonna do with this game for now is just copy this onto my desktop. So we've got that one. And eventually when this is finished extracting, I'm gonna be showing you how to use Retrobat, how to configure your controller, how to add games, Look at RetroArch in quick menu, how to load and save your games. Okay, so we now finished completing a Retrobat setup wizard. So what we're going to do is just go to finish. And we can now delete that setup executable because everything is now on a brand spanking new USB device. So let's take a look. What we're going to see inside the Retrobat is you've got BIOS folder, we got cheats, decorations, emulation station, emulators, ROMs. Now the ones which are mainly important for Retrobat, if you're new to it, is pretty much your ROMs folder and your BIOS folder. If we just go into ROMs, you're gonna find folders covering systems from say the 3DO, right down to the ZX Spectrum. And this is where we need to put our games. So just a minute ago, I downloaded a Commodore 64 game. If I go into the C64 folder inside ROMs, what I'm gonna do is drag that game inside of there. The game is now placed inside of that ROM C64 folder. So when we boot up Retrobat, we're gonna see this game displayed. But not all systems in Retrobat is as simple as this. Some systems inside of Retrobat won't show up and there's reasons for that but mainly it's your more complex systems uh systems such as techno para and other arcade systems which i've covered lots of times so if there is systems arcade systems in particular some setups are a little bit more complex than others so certain systems in retrobat will require bios files sega cd playstation 1 ps2 for example now your bios files are literally going to go inside of your bios folder so largely BIOS files don't need to go in any of these subfolders. They can literally be placed loosely. There is exceptions for a couple of systems here where we do have to put BIOS files inside of some of these just here. So anyway, what we're gonna do, we're gonna just come back out of here and we're gonna open up Retrobat for the first time. So I need to go to my USB device. So here's Retrobat.exe. If I just open this up for the first time,
Okay, so this is RetroBat. So for emulation station users out there, you will notice a massive similarity because this is emulation station virtually. So first thing we're going to see then is the names of the system. So I've got Commodore 64 here, which has appeared first. And that's pretty much because I've just added a game into that C64 ROM folder. If I go inside here and I'm pressing A on my controller, which reminds me, if you've not connected a controller, connect it. Otherwise, if you're using a keyboard, it's a combination of using your cursor keys and the Z and X buttons to enter and come out of options. So here's my Leicester game, and what we're going to do first then is look at scraping some artwork. If I press start on my controller, what I'm going to do is just go down to scraper by using my D-pad. If I press A on this, scrape from screen scraper. We've got a choice of different scraping databases here. Screen scraper is largely the best one. If we go to scraper settings, image source, I always recommend putting this onto box 3D. Box source, I always keep the box 2D. Logo source, I'm going to put this to marquee. And if we just go down, I'm going to make sure that video is enabled. What this does is scrapes preview videos for games. I'm also going to select fan art. Now, let's just say a scraping database doesn't have official artwork, then it will try and replace that, say, with fan artwork. So fan artwork is better than having blank spaces. We can also download map for games and we can also download bezel as well so really i recommend most of these just enabling we next need to sign up with screen scraper which is absolutely free and i'll leave the link in my description once you've got your username and passwords we're just going to go down to username and just pop in your username and then obviously passwords and then once you're done with this we're going to go back and then finally scrape for now and top right hand side of the screen is going to tell you which artwork is downloading. And once it's finished, you're going to see scrape and finish, update game list to apply changes. So from the main menu, and remember you can access this by pressing your start button or enter button if you're using the keyboards. Just go at the game settings, update game lists, really update game lists and just select yes. And here we go. Now the reason this game hasn't scraped any artwork could be for a couple of reasons. Leicester is actually spelt here, Leicester hyphen V1.1. So in that case, on some games, Scraper won't identify that particular name on its database. There's another reason is that Leicester is a fairly new game. And so artwork might not exist yet for this. But generally, most of your ROMs, most of your games will scrape artwork as well as preview videos if you take on that option. Now, other things we can do inside a Retrobat is download emulators like i've been saying retro arch pretty much supports around 90 95 percent of systems inside a retro bat so if we go inside a retro bat you're going to find a long list here of different emulators so there's particular systems uh, such as techno para and even pcsx2 that we're going to need to download as retro arch won't support particular systems here but for most of these, you'll be able to check out my Retrobat entire playlist. And most of these here I've covered over, say, the last year. Now, other things we can do from Retrobat then is if we press start and go down to updates and downloads. If I press A to select this, if we go to content downloader. From here, we can actually download homebrew games and some demos, as you can see. So if you fancy playing some homebrew, so for example, I'm going to randomly download this OG Game Boy game. So if I press A and install by pressing A again. And there we go. So it's been installed. Now, technically, we should have Game Boy and we do. So if I go in here, here's my game, which I've just installed using Retrobat. And if we go back to main menu, we'll get updates and downloads content downloader if i just press my right d-pad i can then go across to intro videos medias and shaders and mega bezels intro video so you'll notice just now when i booted up retrobat we had an intro video on retrobat version 6 we got lots of new intro videos to actually download for example cyber v1 intro by scotty retro is a new intro video if i download this one again by pressing a and install 
So that one's now been installed and we can use as many of these as we want. So each time you boot up Retrobat, it will largely be a case of selecting a random intro video, but we can actually delete Retrobat videos which are included with it when you install it. Some of them are a little bit boring, to be honest. Now, if we go back to Content Downloader, Medios, we got in the latest version 6 3D Zen Launchers Pack Volume 1. 3D Zen is an emulator for Nintendo NES 8-bit games, and the emulator itself makes particular games 3D. I've covered this inside of my Retro Bat playlist, and I've also covered it in my Console Emulation Setup Guides playlist. Finally, under Content Downloader, if we go to Shaders and Mega Bezels, by downloading particular packs here, we'll actually add aesthetics to our games. So, for example, we can have bezels going around the sides of games instead of having black bars on the sides. But again, I've covered that in great detail in my Retrobat playlist. If I press B to come out and drop down one to themes, Now, under themes, we can actually download and install themes to use within Retrobat. So, we got some new ones here, and we got some classics, which has been on Retrobat for quite some time. If I want to download a theme, I'm going to press A, and I'm going to use a Star Wars theme. So, install. And I'm going to make you aware that some themes are larger than others. There's particular themes, and some of them are around 8GB in size. So, if your USB stick isn't too big, it's not particularly sensible or wise downloading, say, an 8 gigabyte theme. So in that case, then, make sure your USB size is actually bigger. So to actually install this Star Wars theme, what I'm going to do is go back to main menu and press B on my controller, user interface settings, theme set, and the themes you've downloaded are going to be in here. So here's my Star Wars theme. If I press A and press B to come out, and here we go, we now got a Stormtrooper. Pretty cool stuff. And talking about themes, we can actually customize these themes too. So it's a case of going to user interface settings, theme configuration, and we can change particular things here. So for example, game list view style, we can put this on to say detailed. If we come out, I've now changed it. And so the layout or the theme has been changed. Now, something else we can do within the main menu is game settings, retro achievement settings. If we enable this, retro achievements is a free little perk you get with particular emulators nowadays. You go over to the retro achievements website, which is free, and you register for free. Once you've got your details, pop your username and password into this, just like you would have done with Screen Scraper. And particular games then are going to give you rewards, little pop ups. We can also use different sounds just here. For example, if we go down to unlock sounds, RetroArch standard. So every time we get an achievement, you're going to get a RetroArch standard sound. Now, Retrobat has also got net play settings, which means that if we enable this, we can actually play people online. So say you're in Britain, you can actually technically play people in Australia or vice versa. So this is a setup guide, which I've actually yet to cover, but that one's going to be coming soon, but it's not actually that difficult to do. Now, a good thing with Retrobat is the ability to use missing BIOS check. And what this is going to do is tell us which BIOS files we need as a whole. So if I select this, right now I've only got a Game Boy game, which actually needs a BIOS. So it's telling us right here, I actually need the GB underscore BIOS dot bin. If you've got multiple systems on here and you're missing BIOS files, if you go to missing BIOS check, it's going to give a long list of those BIOS files required. Now, if I press select on my controller, this is going to bring us into quick access menu. From here, we can go to view user manual, which is going to give you some extra information on particular things. If I press A on this, we've now got the user manual pop up. So there might be things that I've not covered on my channel particular button or hotkey configurations. So there's lots of information should you need it here. And going back to the layout of Retrobat itself, if we scroll through some of these, we've actually got Light Gun Retro Gaming. Now, I've actually got no games in here for now, or rather what I put in. But what this is going to do is say you've got a main set, 
what Retrobat automatically does is puts all your light gun supported games into this folder so they're easier to find. Okay, next thing you might want to know about is actually how to set up your controller. So my controller is working fine, but if you want a particular way of setting up or mapping your controller to your preferences, main menu by pressing start, controller settings, controller mapping, and if I press OK here, configure input. And if you can see, it says one gamepad detected. That's very faint. But what it's asking us to do is hold on to a button, any button on your controller, for a couple of seconds. And it's just detected by Google Stadia controller. So we can actually then map out our buttons. So for example, South is going to be represented on my controller as my A button. And that's going to drop us down to the next option. So East is obviously going to be my B button and so on. Now, you've got lots of mappings to do just here. And if you find you run out of buttons on your controller, the way to bypass one of these options is literally holding onto a button on your controller for a couple of seconds. So I'm going to finish this, start, select. So what I'm going to do next then is for left shoulder, I'm going to show you how to bypass this option. For example, if you don't have a button on your controller to support this, if I just hold onto my A button, as you can see, it's going to skip it and it will say not defined. And you can do this as many times as you want. Now, right at the bottom, we got hotkey. This is probably one of the most important keys that you're gonna need. What this does is exits us from games. So when we're in a game and we want to exit it, the hotkey is gonna be the button combination to press or button to exit out that game. So you can press anything on here. And there we go. So once you've configured your controller, we're just going to go to OK. Now, if we just go down a few options, controller number one. So just here, I can see Google Stadia controller has been identified. So just select that. Now, if you're using a two player game, for example, and you need another controller, controller two, it also says Google Stadia controller. So at this point, make sure you've got your second controller in and you obviously need to select that controller. Okay, next up in main menu, we got sound settings. Now, I've got no music playing right now because I've actually disabled it for this setup guide. If the music does your head in, it's just a simple case of going to the front end music and toggling on or off. So if I put this one back on and actually go back to system volume. And if I go down to music volume, it just turns up by pressing the pad. And if you don't like that music, there is ways to add your own music. So to add your own music inside a Retrobat, what we're going to do is just go to your USB drive and you're going to find an emulation station folder here. If we go inside of here, at the top you'll find dot emulation station. Go inside of here and second folder down, music. And inside of here, you'll find five dot OGG tracks. And this is the tracks which is going to come as default with Retrobat. If you don't like these, just simply delete them. And you can actually replace these with your own music files. But they need to be in dot OGG file extension. And dot OGG file extension, especially for music, is a bit obscure. So there's actually a website just here where you can actually convert MP3 files into OGG. So simply have your MP3 music file ready, go to choose files, select your MP3 file from here, and then you can convert it to OGG. Once you've done that, you can then put in your new dot OGG music track inside of this dot emulation station music folder. And next up, we're just going to go down to system settings. If we go to information, what this is going to do is actually tell us how much size we've got left on disk. So for example, my USB device is actually 952.43 gigabyte. And the space I've got left here is actually going to tell us I've got 422 gigabyte. So that's a real good way of finding out what's from Retrobat, how much space you've got to work with. So say, for example, we want to download one of those eight gigabyte themes take a look at system disk usage before you download it it's also going to tell us different information here about what computer we're running so as we can see i'm using 11th gen core i7 processor with eight cores 16 gigabyte of memory and it also tells us that i'm running a geforce rtx 3050 so lots of information there 
user interface modes so we can actually simplify the look of Retrobat. But personally, most of you are going to want to put full on this. If I put this to kiosk and come out by pressing B, And as it says, if I enable kiosk mode, it's actually going to shut down most options we got. So I don't recommend this, but if you want it, it's there. And under user interface mode, we can actually put this onto kit. And again, if we press B to come out, again, it's going to tell us that particular things are going to be restricted. The use for kids mode is, for example, if you've got children who's going to be using Retrobat and you don't want them to mess around with your settings, this is what this option is really going to do. I'm going to go with no. Now then, I've got most of the important stuff out of the way, so let's actually launch a game. So I'm going to launch my C64 game, and to launch it, I'm going to press A on my controller. Okay, so the Commodore 64 game Lester is working fine. Now, if you're interested in microcomputer emulation using Retrobat, most of these microcomputers, ZX Spectrum, C64, Commodore Amiga, Atari ST, by pressing the select button, you'll get a virtual keyboard to come up. And as a microfan user myself, this virtual keyboard is very useful for times, such as particular games for C64, it might ask us to press run stop. And this is where you can actually access run stop Now, when we're running games through Retrobat and Retrowarch, like this is being run through Retrowarch, if you press a spacebar and you find loading times are ridiculously long, just press spacebar, you'll see a fast forward button appear. And what this does is speeds up the loading process. Okay, so let's take a look at the folders themselves and what we can actually do in these folders. So uh, from Retrobat, we're going to go into Emulation Station and go into .emulation station folder, which I showed you earlier for adding your own music. And from here, if we go into the Themes folder, you're going to find that Star Wars theme, which I've just downloaded, as well as the default theme, which comes to Retrobat. Now, if you're having any issues inside of Retrobat downloading themes, you can actually download, manually download, that is, themes outside of Retrobat, as long as they're emulation station. So, for example, if I just go and type into Google, uh, that little engine where we can type things in and find things, we're going to find various different emulation station themes. And it's just a simple case of downloading themes like this and then just popping them into that dot emulation station themes folder. Now the structure of these themes are pretty much all the same. If we go into the default theme, your themes should look a lot like this. And it really is that simple. And then to apply these themes, we just simply go back inside a Retrobat, use their interface, and then you just apply that theme as you would any other theme, like I showed you earlier on in this video with the Star Wars. And if we go down, we're going to find video folder. And if we go in here, this is where your launch videos are going to be located. So I showed you earlier in this video, downloading videos for introductions into Retrobat. You can actually add more videos. You can actually customize your own videos. So for example, if I add a .mp4 of a video, piece of video footage that I actually wanted to use as the intro video to Retrobat, I could actually put in here as long as it's in .mp format, which is of course a very common video format. So it's that simple. Now, if you don't particularly like the themes which Retrobat comes with, uh, such as Retrobat Neo Geo, just delete it. And we can also delete everything else what we don't want. So what I'm going to do is delete everything here. And I'm actually going to open up Retrobat using this video introduction, which I downloaded earlier in this video. So once we open up Retrobat again, this video will then be our intro. So if I come out and I go into Retrobat.
And there we go. So we've now got the new intro and we don't have a mixture of Retrobat choosing what it launches Retrobat with. If I just come out of here again, so I'm going to press start or enter, quit. We can actually download cheats using Retrobat distribution. So like I said at the start of the video, Retrobat uses RetroArch in the background. You can actually open up RetroArch by going to emulators and you're going to find loads of folders in here. But for this, I'm going to find RetroArch. If I go into this folder, we got several different folders here. But the one we're looking for to actually open up RetroArch outside of Retrobat is RetroArch.executable. Now from here, we can actually add cheats into Retrobat. So to do this, once we're inside of Retrowarch, we're going to go to Online Updater. You can press cursor keys or your D-pad. And if we go to Online Updater and just scroll down, we're going to find Update Cheats. If I press Enter on this, downloading cheats.zip extracting. This can take a little bit of time. Now, whilst we're actually in RetroArch, what this is doing is downloading the cheats to use on particular games. So largely to use these cheats, we do need to access RetroArch quick menu once we're inside of a game using Retrobat. We can actually also download games from here as well. If we go to content downloader and go into this, we got several different folders here. So we've got Doom, and we got various other things we can download. So as an example, I'm going to download Rick Dangerous. I'm going to press enter on this. And we're going to download rickdangerous.zip. And if I come back out, there's other things we can download here for free, such as Doom. And I'm going to download doomshareware.zip. We've even got Super Brothers War, which is obviously a Super Mario Brothers clone of some description. If I actually download this one as well, so Super Cat Wars Lite.zip, if I press enter, download it. And I'm also going to download Quake. And also I'm going to get the shareware version of this, just like Doom. Okay, so once everything's been installed, including the cheats, what we're going to do is just go down the quick retro arch. And we're going to open up Retrobat again. So if I just locate my USB drive, Retrobat, and we're going to open up Retrobat here. So to show you how to use cheats which we just downloaded through RetroArch, I've just included a Nintendo NES game because cheats aren't going to be downloaded for everything and I wouldn't have thought this Commodore 64 game I got would be included as a cheat. So I'm going to go into Nintendo and I've got Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu. If I open this up. And if I access the RetroArch quick menu once my game is loaded up, I'm pressing F1 on the keyboard for this, and that's standard. I can actually apply those cheats from here. So if I just scroll down, just go down to cheats. And from here, we're going to go down to apply after toggle. And I'm going to make sure this is turned on. I'm pressing A on my controller. And if I go up to load cheat file, append. I'm then going to see lots of different folders in here from Amstrad GX 4000, but the folder I need for this particular game is Nintendo Entertainment System, which is just here. And here's all the cheat files that we just downloaded using RetroArch. So there's a lot of games in here, and this pretty much covers all the classic Nintendo NES games. So the game, of course, I'm playing is Jackie Chan, so everything's in alphabetical order. If I just look for Jackie Chan's, Action Kung Fu. I've got a couple here, so I'm going to try Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu USA.cht. If I press A on this, if I then come out and just scroll down, we're going to find lots of different cheats for this particular game. So I've got Cheat Zero, Infinite Health. If I enable this by going into it and pressing A, I'm going to go down to Enabled and press A to turn it on. Infinite Lives, again, I'm going to go into this, Enabled, and turn it on. 
and we can apply various different cheats for many different games in Nintendo NES, for example. Some really obscure cheats as well. Um, I did a little guide on this a while back where I was playing Ninja Turtles and um, the turtle actually literally flew into the air. Uh, so at that point, I played some X-Files music to make a bit of a joke out of it. Uh, Infinite Energy, again, we can turn this on. Level Select, turn it on. And you can go on and on with these. Uh, fake Infinite Energy on but anyways you can very easily get carried away with these cheats it's just go down to apply changes applying cheat changes and if we come out by pressing b and again quick menu resume And that's it for today's Retro Bat Portable Setup Guide. So I tried including everything in this video just for beginners really and what Retro Bat Front End has to offer in its latest version 6. So if you get confused or something isn't working, just literally just go back to the part where you think you might mess up. Generally, I've tried to be as slow as possible in this video because I realize that not everyone is technical and that's what makes my channel successful nowadays, that simplicity actually gets you emulating classic retro games. So anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. And that's also going to get you notified every time I release a setup guide. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.